In this video, we're going to talk about state and global state, which is the idea that a value can be held and changed over the lifetime of a program. Then we're going to use this to implement modes within our program. And this is going to greatly expand the amount of things that our program can do. Our first goal is to implement a dice game that has betting. I'm going to implement this dice game in another copy of the starter code. So I'm going to go ahead and clone it in the command line first. So I'm going to copy the URL and my present working directory is my SWE 101 folder. I'm going to git clone this. And it's going to create me the folder over here. And I'm going to see the inside. And npm install. Now I can open this in VS Code. I've opened my script.js inside of VS Code. Now I'm going to copy the simple version of the dice game into my script.js. I've copied the simple version of the dice roll game into my script.js. Let's review what the code does. First, I have my dice roll. It creates a random number from one to six. That's right here. Next, I define the default message, which is that you lost. And that's right here on line six. This gives the user the information of what they typed in, what their guess was, and what the random number is that they rolled. Then I have my conditional. If the user guesses the dice roll correctly, that's on line eight. And if that guess is correct, if the conditional is true, then the code between the curly braces executes and I reassign the value of my output value to the winning message. Our first goal is going to be to implement betting inside the dice game which in this first simple version will mean that when the user wins, they start to accumulate more money. So if the user has won once, they accumulate $1 to their total bankroll. And if they win twice, they accumulate $2. Before we can talk about implementing this game, let's talk about the idea of values in general that get manipulated over the lifetime of the program. First, let's just define what we mean when we say the lifetime of the program. So we're going to be implementing this betting program and it's going to accumulate money over the total lifetime that the user is using the program. And so what do we really mean by that? Let's uh, make a more technical specific definition. So let's review the life cycle of all of the components that we're dealing with in the code. So our program, when we see it in the browser, depends on an HTML page. This is the index HTML that's in the starter. Without this, our code can't run. So the very first step that happens when we see the page on the screen is that this page is being loaded by the browser. That's why we click on the index HTML and not the script.js. So we take the index HTML code and it's being loaded into the browser in order to run. And that's when we see the words on the page. The next thing that happens is that the JavaScript part of the browser is initialized. Uh, the index HTML code sees that there's a JavaScript fi uh, file associated with the index HTML file. And that JavaScript code is loaded into the JavaScript part of the browser. This is the beginning of the life cycle of our JavaScript code inside the browser. I've loaded my code in the browser. And so this means that the life cycle of this page has already started. My JavaScript has loaded into the browser and is currently running. And it's ready for me to click the submit button in order for it to run the main function. Let's talk about the ways that we can end the life cycle of this page. There's a couple different ways. One is that I can navigate away from the page. And that just means that I go somewhere else. 
So if I type in google.com, it means that index.html is no longer loaded inside the tab. The second way is if I simply hit the refresh button. The refresh button means that the browser goes and gets from the folder my index.html file all over again. And it's as if it had never seen this file uh, to begin with. The third way is if I simply close the tab, just like this. We have a technical definition for the beginning of the life cycle of the page and also the end of the life cycle of the page. So let's talk about what happens in the middle and how we can work with values as the page continues to run. So my starter code is currently running inside the page and I can hit submit and my main function runs. And let's talk about the values that are being held in this page. One value is the main function. This is inside the page and it's going to be inside the page for the lifetime of the page. Inside the console, I can also define a variable and put a number inside. At any time, I can also still run the main function and I can change the value of banana count variable. And then I can end the life cycle of this page by clicking the refresh button. And when I do that, it's going to wipe away all of the values that had accumulated in this page. So I'm going to hit the refresh button. And if I try to check the current value of banana count variable, it's going to tell me that the variable is not even defined. And that's because I have not created this variable yet since I hit the refresh button. 